that one of the critical breakdowns of this need is the letters ESP. We had to focus on eligibility, we had to focus on sust sustainable finances, and we had to focus on a pharmaceutical distribution network. The A8 addresses this. Senator Eric Pratt has done an amazing amount of work on this bill to get us to this point. And I think what we need to do here with the A8 is we need to move the actual distribution to the pharmacies who are equipped to receive product, make certain that the packing slips match up with the product received, store it, label it, refrigerate it, keep it between two and four degrees centigrade, and then get it in the hands of the folks who need to inject it for life. One of the big differences that we we have between uh, this bill and the bill that I introduced today um, is looking at how the emergency insulin is provided, um, how it's paid for. And so I wanted to um, be able to discuss, you know, changing the model um, in this bill towards uh, something more similar to the, the other bill and having an insulin um, registration and licensing fee which would be collected from manufacturers in order to cover the costs of the emergency insulin. Um, I think that the current bill requires that that funding come from um, state appropriations. And I think that from my perspective, that isn't the direction that we want to go to um, acknowledge that, that the, the cost of the insulin, the prices of insulin, um, are such a huge barrier for um, patients in Minnesota. And we, we want to be doing something to address that. Um, by the state taking care of that cost, I think we're just um, saying that, OK, we'll, we'll manage, we'll, we'll help people, but um, we aren't really going to ask the manufacturers to be contributors to solving solving these emergency problems. This to me looks like um, a, it's penalizing to the manufacturers. And actually we are, in, in insulin, it's not about punishing a business that's, that's been profitable. It's about figuring out how we can um, provide a life-saving drug to um, those in need. And the state does have a responsibility in that. Talked with some one di person with diabetes who was telling me that when she started on on insulin, I'm thinking 25 years ago, she was paying about 20 bucks for what she's now paying 400 bucks for. There's no new innovation in that. That was a product that was on the market at the time. Twenty dollars, if they were charging 20 bucks for it, we wouldn't have a bill here. We wouldn't have a crisis. We wouldn't have Alex Smith's story to tell. It was 100% caused by the price gouging. And the trouble I have, the reason I think it's important to do something where they're paying for it is the way it is in the bill otherwise is the state of Minnesota and its taxpayers will pay the bill. And if anything, that provides an incentive for the manufacturers to raise prices more. Because the visible stories, the tragedies that happen from people who can't afford the price go away because we're going to pay the cost of it now and they don't have to worry about it, so you can jack up the price further. The advocates for this bill have done is elevate the discussion and the consciousness. So we're all paying attention. Physicians are paying attention. We're asking our patients more often, are we going to be able to afford this medicine, this insulin? The pharmaceutical companies are hearing the message as well. We all know that um, just by the frequency of their visits to our office. So I think to do something like this today would be premature. The Trump administration is putting forward an option for a second pathway. I need the pharmaceutical industry to think long and hard about how you can relieve pressure at this point in particular, but prescription drugs in general, by looking at that alternative pathways. I can help you with enabling legislation. I would love to cheerlead an alternative to the high price rebating model that we currently have. But you gotta want it. And days like today should make you want it. 
you have to want to give relief to your patients. The idea that rebates should be passed down to people at the point of sale, how about just have a normal price at the point of sale?